Meet Leslie Clark. Why is there a cop? Yo, how is it freaking public intoxication when I'm doing it at home? You have got a sewer for a mouth. I just threw it up. You know, <laughs> so, no, wait. No. Man, I'm gonna be straight up with you. I told her how old I was. I said, I'm not allowed to talk to anybody above the age of 17. Leslie Clark is a 25-year-old TikTok content creator from Louisiana. Leslie's main form of content on her TikTok page consists of either her singing or her doing live streams, where she will cry about boys, tell lies, and try to pull scams. And she does this all from the comfort of her grandmother's home. Leslie lives with her grandmother, and to say that the relationship is very poor would be an understatement. One of the main reasons why it is so poor is because Leslie stole her grandmother's car a couple years ago, even getting arrested and thrown in jail for it. But after Leslie was bonded out, her grandmother took her right back in. You would think that Leslie would be appreciative for the forgiveness, grateful for the roof over her head, and willing to spend the last years of her grandma's life with her. Leslie would much rather go live on TikTok blaring loud music all throughout the house while her grandmother is trying to rest. And when she came downstairs complaining about how loud the music was, Leslie's disrespectful nature became very clear. I didn't mean it like that though. Then why did you say it like that? I just did! Yeah, that's what I mean. I'm not taking any more of your abuse, Leslie. Just there is no abuse, I was just saying. Just leave it alone. I don't know why you're making such a big deal about it. I don't, I don't want you talking about it. Like you're making a big deal out of nothing. Yeah, I make it a big deal out of it because I want some respect. I was getting your respect. I was just, I was joking the way I said it. Her and her grandma get into it quite often on her TikTok live streams. And who could blame her? Leslie's getting drunk all the time, she's vaping all over the place, she's throwing up and not cleaning it. But that isn't even one of the main issues that Grammy has with Leslie. She's totally cool with all that happening. The only time I've seen Leslie get her really riled up is if Leslie starts cussing. It is a strict rule of that house, especially if Leslie is live streaming. And if she even catches a whiff of that dirty mouth, she's gonna let you know. Like this time, where she absolutely went off on Leslie. Because while Leslie was outside on a TikTok live stream, Grammy could hear her swearing through the walls. Check that filthy mouth. Yes, ma'am. You have got a sewer for a mouth. And I hear it in here with the door closed. Don't you dare get on that phone and cuss like that again. Shh. Stay your ass in the house, goddamn. Even if Grandma's a cranky old bat, nobody deserves to be treated like that by Leslie. Having your car stolen, your home disrespected, and then having it put all over the internet. Leslie has absolutely no respect for anyone, not just Grandma. She'll go live on TikTok and blare loud music out in the streets of her neighborhood. And after doing this one night, a cop rolls up. The cop tells her to cut it out, that there's been noise complaints, and that if she keeps it up, he'll have to take her to jail. But as we previously witnessed, she has no respect for any form of authority. I'm not gonna take you to jail right now for public intoxication. It's not public, I'm doing it at home. Okay. I'm trying to work with you here. Let me talk to you. I'm not gonna arrest you right now for disturbing the peace by public intoxication. How am I disturbing the peace? Okay, so I got a call from the neighbors that said they saw you walking down the street, you're being very, very loud. I wasn't being loud. Okay, to them you were. That's all that matters. That's bullshit. That's all that matters. You want to go to Donsonville and tell the judge? I wasn't even talking. You can go to Donsonville and tell the judge that's what you want to do? No, I'm just saying I wasn't even talking when I was walking home. Alright, so I'm ready to take you to jail right now. Are you going to shut up and listen to me or are you going to be good? You keep you keep mouthing off to me, I'm going to take you to Donaldsonville. I got all day long. I got all night. I got nine more hours. Stay. Go 
walking down the street anymore. Don't do it. Don't do it anymore. Okay, you understand. Leslie, if I get called back out here before you get them, they can get a jail. For nothing? For absolutely nothing. Don't worry, I'm, I'll, I'll call it away. Don't worry, I'll be calling it away. Motherfucker. Yo, how is it freaking public intoxication when I'm doing it at home? When I didn't, oh, when y'all see me open the bottle sitting here, and how am I being allowed? This is only a mere snippet of the conversation that Leslie and this police officer had. I don't know if you heard this little like clicking noise in the background of that video, aside from the crickets, but that was the police officer with the handcuffs in his hands clicking them basically letting Leslie know that he's so close to taking her away. But Leslie does not care, she has no respect for police officers or the law in general, because she is well known for trying to pull scams on people to get money so she can buy either food or more vapes. The most heinous of these scams that I was able to uncover involved baby formula, something that at the time was both very expensive, it still is, and it was hard to get. Leslie claimed that her cousin had a newborn that needed formula, and they were so broke that they couldn't afford it. So Leslie took to social media, asking people to donate to her cousin so that she could buy her baby some formula. And someone who was actually trying to do something good for the world decided to give her enough money for two containers. Only to discover that the donation link was directly to Leslie, and people began to uncover it from there. To scam someone is already bad enough, but to try to scam someone on the pretense of a hungry child is evil in my opinion. But we also have to understand that Leslie is a compulsive liar. She has made many claims of being pregnant by many different men to either get them to try to stay or give her any kind of attention, and then goes on to not only stalk these men, but talk about them years after her interactions with them. And the main two that I want to talk about today are Perry and Tyler. Perry not only had relations with Leslie, but he also dated her for a couple of days, definitely less than a week. Now I want you to keep in mind that this was years ago, because Leslie still talks about him to this day. She even has his name tattooed on her body. Many people thought that this was a joke, that this image was ripped straight from Google, but no, she actually has Perry's name tattooed on her body. It's her second name tattoo. Perry has been informed of this tattoo and finds it extremely creepy, and has since cut off all contact with Leslie. But this didn't stop Leslie from keeping an eye on him. As soon as she had heard that Perry had a new girlfriend, she made this video congratulating the woman in one of her now iconic crying over boys TikToks. This is to the girl who kissed a boy I love. Hi. I'm the ex and I know this might sound crazy, but you got him. You got him. But, do me a favor. Don't break his heart. Always be there for him. Always have his back. Take care of him. And love him unconditionally. Make him happy. Make him know his worth. Always, always be by his side no matter how bad things are. Make him happy when he's sad. Be his shoulder to cry on. Most importantly, 
take good care of him and love him like I did. If you don't fight, he knows how to make it, make up, so. Love him like I did. Perry dated Leslie for only a couple days, years ago, and this is not the only video that she directs towards his new girlfriend. There's ones where she's flexing about her job at the Taco Bell. There's ones where she's crying about him. This has been going on for so long. And many trolls picked up on this, forming their own boyfriend personas to mess with her. Most famous of which is Tyler. But despite it being very well known that he's a fake rapper troll, she still talks about him. And whenever she's down about all this, she's sure to hop on a TikTok live where you can almost guarantee 100% that she's gonna rip ass. Payback's a fucking bitch. I would be lying if I didn't say that I laughed way too much at that. But I wouldn't be lying if I said some of these TikToks get pretty racially charged. Sometimes this conversation about boys morphs into what kind of boys she likes, and then that morphs into what she doesn't like about certain groups of people. I had been seeing people call Leslie a racist all over the place, but I couldn't find clips of her actually being one. That is until I found what I'm about to show you. And before I show you this, I want you to keep in mind that she brings this up completely out of nowhere. It is so out of left field that the person she's talking to doesn't even know how to respond. I'm not trying to sound freaking rude or racist or anything, but you know how bad a black person smells if they don't take a shower after a few days? What someone's race has to do with their hygiene in any way is beyond me. It just goes to show that that's the way Leslie thinks. She thinks that there is that much of a difference between people of different skin colors. But there's also a weird side to this. She's derogatory to people of African heritage, but she also seems to have a thing for them. Making numerous TikToks stating that she desires a black country boy to come sweep her off her feet. I don't know if it's in response to the allegations of racism that she's now making these TikToks, claiming to be sexually attracted to black country men, but somehow all of this is not the worst thing that Leslie's done. It's not the scamming, it's not the thievery, it's not the lies, it's not the stalking. It's crazy to say, but it's not even the racism. It's the fact that on numerous occasions throughout the years, Leslie has tried to prey upon minors. And today I have three examples of this which we're gonna cover. Starting with the most famous, a 15-year-old boy named Ethan. When Ethan was 15, he began speaking with Leslie online, and eventually, she sent him unsolicited photographs, even after he had informed her of his age. And after Ethan had told his older sister about all this, she brought it to the public's attention, and would raise awareness for what Leslie had done and tried to do to her brother. Leslie would dismiss this all as rumors until two years later, Ethan would hop on a live stream with Leslie and two other people grilling her about the pedo accusations. And what he said was nothing short of shocking. My name's Ethan, I was 15 when she sent the nudes to me and I'm 17 now. <laughs> you were the one? You were the one? Yeah. Oh my God, Ethan. Yeah. I was 15 when she sent the nudes to me. My sister has the account logged You don't call me brother. Yes, ma'am. My God. Yes, ma'am. My sister has all the login to that account, all the info. Her father even sent his to me. Like the whole 
families messed up in the head. So, okay, I have a question, Ethan. And Leslie, please, did you know he was 15 when you sent those photos? You yeah, know, I did. No, I didn't. Leslie, okay. how old did you think he was? Uh, t somebody told me he was 18. Why didn't you ask him? Man, I'm going to be straight up with you. I told her how old I was. I said, I'm not allowed to talk to anybody above the age of 17. And that's when she had sent the nudes. Did you and ask for those pictures? No, ma'am, I did not. I showed my sister. Like, right, like, right after I, she sent them, I showed my sister. And that's when her and my Who sister. How old are you right now? I'm 17. He's 17. You're still the baby. Okay. So he's not even 18 yet, Leslie. That little bit of audio that I just had to snip out was Ethan saying that Leslie's father had done the same thing as Leslie to him. He had sent him unsolicited photographs. And I know it's sad to say, but it doesn't surprise me. This kind of abuse is often intergenerational. And like a disease, it spreads. And I truly believe that's what happened to Leslie. Because it is blatantly obvious that she has a preference for minors because we still have two more cases of this to cover. One of these lesser known victims is a 16 year old boy named Wyatt. Leslie was fully aware of his age the whole time and they dated a whopping total of 11 days. After Wyatt broke up with her 11 days later, Leslie would go on to still talk about him to this day, making TikTok after TikTok crying about Wyatt, the 16 year old who she dated. Leslie will of course always deny knowing any of their ages the whole time, but they always admit that they told her exactly how old they were. But this doesn't mean that Leslie doesn't slip up and tell the truth from time to time. Like this TikTok livestream, where she admits to her crimes. But of course, in the most Leslie way possible. There's not- that is true, but back then, I learned from my mistakes. I apologized to him multiple times. And he was like, you know what, Leslie? I'm not going to press charges on you. I'm not, I'm not going to do it. In my opinion, these kind of mistakes cannot be learned from. I think it is very deeply ingrained in their being. And it's even proven that Leslie did not learn from her mistake because we have another case to cover right now. AJ was a 16-year-old girl who Leslie was dating. And after they broke up, AJ came out as a trans male. So of course, Leslie starts berating her with every slur under the sun on social media, doxing him, calling him by his old name, all this other stuff. But the reason why I bring all that up is because Leslie herself went on to admit that she was trans months later, all in an effort to catch AJ's attention. A 16-year-old kid. Anyone who wants to make excuses for Leslie, go right on ahead, but I've just talked about three different cases of her soliciting minors. And that's not even all of them, guys. There will be ones that we'd never know about. There are lesser known ones. She has hit up so many people trying to get with them of all ages that it's hard to even keep track. And even after all of this information has been publicly made available to the internet, she still takes the moral high ground, saying that it was either one time, or they forgave her, or it was all allegations in the first place. Every time you ask her about it, you're almost gonna get a different answer. But you can bet that she does not like being asked these questions. And when you start making some really good points, look out. Because Leslie has no respect for the police, her grandma, or you. Like in this live stream, where Leslie admits to what she's done, but it was only just once, so it's totally okay in her mind. Just to let you know, that, no, this shit happened like fucking years ago, and everybody fucking knows about this shit, and it I have fucking changed. So it's true. Shut the fuck up you still dated a child. I never dated a fucking Multiple child. Multiple children. You sent news to one. No, it's not. It was just one. It doesn't oh, matter. It was just one, Leslie. That and doesn't go away. At this point, everybody fucking knows There's about it. Proof. Everybody freaking knows about it, and it's always fucking news. I fucking changed. I haven't done that shit in fucking years. You heard it yourself. Leslie claims to have not done this in years, but while I was editing this video, gathering clips. I found another instance of her soliciting a minor. 
it has not been years. She is actively doing this, and now that it's more well known, she's actively trying to hide it. This video I'm about to show you is her crying and professing her love to Connor, another minor. Let me just show you the clip, and keep in mind that the person she's talking about is underage. I have a huge crush on Connor. Um, I'm, but I can't date him because he's too young and shit like that, but I do care for him. I do love him. He means absolute world to me. She admits to knowing that he's too young, admits to loving him, and admits to him being her whole world. If that is not damning evidence of someone's preferences, I don't know what is. I've spent over a year and a half now covering some of the craziest individuals on the internet, many of them with disturbing predilections themselves. But if I'm being completely honest with you guys, this takes the cake. I have never run across so many instances with so many different victims and when I get to thinking about it, I realize that there has to be dozens of other people who haven't come out about what Leslie has tried to do to them. Or what Leslie has already done. She sent unsolicited photographs. She opened up an avenue so her father could as well. While it may be funny to watch Leslie fart and chew her tongue, this is really dark stuff. And I think that we can all take solace in knowing that Leslie is currently in a mental institution. She's been there for the past week or so as of the recording of this video, and I'm happy that she's in a place where she's not a danger to herself or the rest of society. But when she returns, and I'm almost for sure that she will, I'll be here to keep you guys updated. And that's all we have for Leslie Clark today, guys. Thank you so much for watching, especially till the end. It means a lot to me. And a quick little shameless plug, every Wednesday at 6.30 Eastern Time, me and fellow YouTuber Smokey MCC have a podcast that we run. It's called Too High for Stupid, and we cover the weekly news of all the people we've made videos on. Every Wednesday, 6.30 Eastern Time, I'd love it if you guys would stop by. Again, thank you so much for watching, thank you for liking, thank you for subscribing. Big shout out to all my channel members, thank you, thank you guys so much for the support. And I hope you all have a wonderful day, night, afternoon, whatever you're doing, just go have a good one. And be sure to keep it Kiwi.